Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What are we doing today? I got a little special treat for you here. Uh, this is my boy, uh, T. Hool from uh, down in Colorado, the lovely state, the green state. Um, this guy and I go way back, so I'm going to start off the, the show with a, a, a song from him. It's an original that he's done. One of my favorites. I love it. The name of the song is Dead and Gone. It is a badass song. I mean, it, it, you know, and this this take is like the first one that he did. Uh, he's playing a uh, old old slide. Um, I didn't ask him when I spoke with him today where the slide came from, but a lot of times guys that play the slide guitar, you know, they tend to use something that's been um, kicked up, you know, kicked around, beat up, you know, whether it be an old pe- piece of, uh, you know plumbing line or or what have you and that's kind of what it looks like he's playing um i'll try and get some video as well uploaded i was trying to earlier but my uh, technological ass is so uh stupid that I, I can't figure any of that shit out so anyway without further ado this is my boy travis wool man good friend good dude and then this guy is like solid as a rock i mean I got nothing but love for this cat. Like I told him when I was talking to him earlier today, I said, there's one word I can think of when I talk about you, and that's heart. And that's what this dude has. He's got a lot of heart. And you can tell it in his music, man. And I, you know, we haven't connected in a lot of years, so it's been good to get back with him and talk to him, and hopefully we'll get him on the show live here one of these nights and uh, just be able to chop it up a little bit because we always have great conversations. It's always kind of one of those deals where... um, I wish I had actually recorded it, and I don't. So, you know, without further ado, this is Mr. Travis Hool. Uh, this is one of his originals, first time played, and it's called Dead and Gone, and I just love this fucking song, man. I mean, I've been listening to it for the last fucking number of days, man, since we reconnected and started bullshitting again, you know, and... I mean, I, I I had the the uh, had the fortunate opportunity to to sit in and uh, play percussion with him. I know one night it was, it was a long time ago, wasn't it, Julio? Shit, I was like, I don't even know what year that was. It was before I went away, but we had fun. I mean, my only standout moment was when he covered uh, "Burn One Down" by Ben Harper, and I got to play the uh, you know the the percussion intro. That's my stand uh, standout moment whatever it was just awesome to be out there playing with you know, to sit there with him and, and just uh look at the smiles that he put on faces you know because everybody was always i mean and it, it, they still are anytime travis comes around everybody's stoked he's just uh, uh you know he exudes um goodness and grace and is just a stand-up cat and i i, I love the motherfucker to death and i'm looking forward to uh you know Giving his big old ass a bear hug here one of these days here soon. So, hey, Julio, this is for you, man. I'm putting you out there. Love you, brother. Hmm. Seas. 
Resting on my soul Bringing all I want more I'm a rock to the floor Till I get down in the water I will float, I will sink Yeah, no one's saving me Water flows, it will roll Till I'm dead and gone That's right, get some tea hole. Damn, you can't beat that shit. Can't beat it, period. Can't beat that at all. Yeah, that's my boy right there, man. That's my dog. T hole. You would never you'd be hard pressed to meet a better cat than that dude. I can tell you that right now, man. I got nothing but love for him. Like I told him earlier today, I said there's one thing, I mean there's only one word I can think of when I think of you, and I said that's heart. That cat's got heart, man. He's got soul. And uh, just just a good dude. Anyway. t who Love you, brother. Anyhow. So we're going to get going here a little bit. Um, it's it's early in the morning. I got a few things on my mind, as always. You know, we had... Um, make sure I'm not making the same mistake I made the other night. You know, this is all new to me. Y'all who know me know that I'm just a, I'm just a jackass. You know, some guy that, I mean, aside from building the studio, I, guess, I mean, because I pieced all this together, so that's at least something. It ain't much. It is what it is. Sorry about the last time I was wearing the glasses. I got a piece of splinter or something stuck in my eye. Still trying to get it out. It's been driving me nuts trying to do the eye wash and everything. No, I'm not just stoned. Sorry. I wish I was that cool, but, you know, it's been a long time. Those were days gone by. So, anyways. But what I am looking at, and one of the things, and it keeps coming back to this, and and I hate doing this because I really don't want to go back and forth with this shit because it's really something that I don't think is... Something that should affect us, but I've been thinking about it because I'm, I'm I'm fixing to head out to Atlanta here, um, early June, uh, for for Pook's uh, birthday celebration. Gonna see a Dodger game for the first time in like fucking three years. I'm really stoked, and we're gonna be at, at you know what whatever that whatever it is now Turner Field, I guess in Atlanta, and it's gonna be fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, Jonathan, aka Boots Rice, uh, looking forward to running into Diamond. Um, seeing Ma Dukes, uh, Miss Cheryl Shiver. I haven't seen her in a long time, and I love her to death. That's that's Pook's mom. She's just a, a, a beautiful lady. I mean, she, she's just another individual that just exudes uh, absolute goodness, and it, you know, it's just going to be awesome to see her. And there, there's there's a few other people I know out there that hopefully I run into, man. You know, and I mean, we'll see what what it is and what happens. And and because I, I, I gotta say, well, um, big shout out to Toad, Mr. Paul Gomez, man. Thank you, bro. Um, uh, 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 Toad purchased me my, my plane ticket. Now I'm 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 a little nervous about this. You know what I'm saying? I'm nervous about flying. Right now, I mean, I used to fly like those of you that know me. I used to fly like every weekend, right? I mean, like I was, I was out there. I was going to shows. Um, I mean, I was traveling the friendly skies, you know, on a, on a weekly basis, sometimes twice a week. And it's been a long time. 
I mean, I haven't been out, I haven't been out there since I, uh, you know, basically since I got divorced because um, my wife worked for the airlines and uh, she had the the benefits. And I'm not a rich man. I mean, I am a rich man. I'm a I'm a rich man in a lot of ways. I mean, you know, wealth comes in in different packages than money. And we, uh, I think a lot of times we, we, we miss that. Like we, we overlook it. Like we get too worried about these dollar bills that, I mean, you know, what do they mean? I, I mean, onion heads getting ready to, you know, throw out another, who knows how many trillion of them. Man, then these cats will be coming out talking about printing money. Man, we've been through this. I don't need to sit here and rehash this bullshit. It don't matter. It, what it's going to do, though, is just going to put us one step closer to, um, you know, the United States of America being um, secondary. Um, my heart goes out to everybody in the Middle East right now. I was watching some of those videos, man, you know, and, and, and seeing, like, that whole fucking apartment building go down. <sighs> I mean, it's hard to sit here and say. I, I mean, I, I I don't know who I can get behind with any of it. You know, the only the only thing I can get behind is that you know, motherfuckers, knock this fucking shit off. There's plenty of room for all of us, and it don't matter what fucking religion you are. It doesn't. It, it you know. You, you, we got to stop killing each other. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we have to. Life is too short, man. We weren't put on this planet to be murderers. And that's what that's what bothers me. So regardless of the politics of the whole thing that's happening uh, between Israel and, and the Palestinians and Hamas and, you know, Netanyahu and whoever else is involved and whether they're trying to test, um, um, you know, beanhead, who he doesn't even know what's going on, you know, and I'm not trying to talk about, you know, and here's the thing with you, Joe Biden, hey, you know what, I don't wish the man ill. He's our president, you know, I mean, that's, that's where it's at. I don't wish the man ill. He's an old man. He's too old to be dealing with this shit, you know, and I mean, he's, he's he, you know, and a, and a man has suffered with a, a stutter problem. I'm probably too hard on him. Um, I do feel like his actions have, in the past, I think that his track record shows that he has, you know, he's done some racist, fucked up shit. Does that mean that he's beyond redemption? I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think we can all redeem ourselves to a certain extent. Um, now, if you're a child molester, rapist, and that's the other thing with, with Joe, who know I don't know. I wasn't there, but you know what? I mean, there's some, there's a lot of people that have, you know, a lot, of la a lot of ladies have come out. And I mean, he said, believe all females. And then when they come out and they, um, sorry, I'm sitting here watching The Simpsons up there in the corner and they're doing the one with Pinchy the lobster. I love the end. Homer's eating Pinchy. Oh, Pinchy, I wish you were here to see this. He's sitting there eating the lobster. <laughs> anyway. Sorry, I'm distracted. I don't know. I think there's redemption out there for all of us. I hope there is for me. Maybe there is, maybe there is. I don't know. I mean, I've never done any of those things to anybody. I never would. I never, you know, put put that on somebody. But, um, and I don't know if this man has or not. I mean, I, I, you know, it's hard to say. But it's kind of weird that the guy goes from believe all women to... I don't believe all women unless they're talking about me. And then it's like, you know, then he's beyond reproach. Which, I don't know. I find that iffy at best. That's just me. Think what you want, whatever. I don't wish, I really, I don't wish the man ill. I don't wish anybody ill that's um in a position like that. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting and talking to my son tonight. We're, we're discussing, um, you know, politics and, you know, in, 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 a, in a manner that's r relative to um, what he's going through in like middle school, right? 
you know, you've got different factions and they all play against one another. And I don't believe that as we grow older, it ever changes. We just become older middle schoolers and we kind of act the same way. You know, we do. I mean, really, I mean, we, we look at politicians. I mean, what in the world? You have to think about this. What in the world would make you want to run for president? Think about that. You want to be in that position? You, you, you have to be a megalomaniac. You have to be a little, if not a lot, egotistical. I mean, you're, you're running for the office of the most powerful person on the planet, at least for the time being. Now, that could change. China's right there. They're ready to, I mean, they're ready to take us down, honestly. We're very close. And we've got a crisis going on down at the border. We've got a, and it's a humanitarian crisis, and it sucks. And they're using children as these bargaining chips to get what they want. And that sucks. When females have to almost unequivocally go on birth control before they decide to in it, go over the border with the coyotes because they know that they're going to experience some sort of a sexual assault. And when I say that, I'm saying that um, kindly because basically they know that they're going to get raped. And I don't like using that word. I don't like saying it. I mean, I don't even like talking about it because I, I can't imagine that. I, I can't imagine being a, an individual that would put another human being through that. It's just... It, it, it's hard to believe that that people do that to one another. And it's sad, and I and I, I you know at the end of the the whole thing is I feel bad for the children, the female, every, anybody, anybody who would put themselves in that situation to come across the border. You know that life on the other side of that border has probably not been that great. I mean, if if you're a female and and you're willing to Take birth control because you, you want to cross that, that border, and, and but you know that the price for it is that you're probably going to be sexually assaulted. That's a tough fucking spot. It's a very difficult spot. And I think that's kind of what we need to look at. More so than politicizing this shit, you know? Biden and Obama built the cages, but what do you do? What do you do when you've got children that are coming over with these fucking assholes, you know, these cartel dickheads that are, and they're selling kids. They're selling kids. You know, for some reason we sit there and we look at these children like they're like, they're like not, you know, it, 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 it's almost like the fucking Jim Crow shit. It's like they're like three-fifths of a person or something because they come from a, a a different country. And they're trying to get somewhere where life is going to be better for them. And, and, and you, you know, you, you can't, you can't just say, Hey, the fucking borders open, pour on in here because then you end up with, you know, these guys from MS 13, which for those of you who don't know, and I know that everybody's got a big thing about this, but when Trump was talking about the animals and this and that, and he was talking about MS-13, and you're talking about this is an El Salvadorian um, gang. These are not um, Mexican nationals, so you have these individuals that are coming through in these caravans. Granted, you also have a lot of guys from the cartel that are coming through. And you have a lot of people that are being manipulated and that they're basically you know i mean a lot of people that are that, that are you know a lot of the a lot of the paisa cats that i was down with that were getting busted for uh transport charges you know they um yeah they were in a position where the cartel's like look dog you either you're gonna mule this shit across the border or we're gonna fucking gut your fucking family in front of you and then when we see you next we're gonna you know 
you're going to get it even fucking worse. And I've seen the videos and shit of them hacking people up, and it is not something you want to watch. It's not. I mean, it, it is a crisis, you know. And then you have a lot of you have all these people that are, um, you know, they're coming across the border, and they are. Um, from what I understand, now I can't personally verify this, but a lot of the people are, are, are positive COVID nineteen. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. So I, I, I try not to I try not to say things that I can't verify, and that's one of those things I can't. This is what I hear. What I do know is that Biden hasn't been down there. Kamala Harris hasn't been down there. Um, there was a group of Republicans, including you know the likes of Ted Cruz, Lindsey Graham, individuals of of that nature from the Republican Party that went down and spoke out. Now a lot of it, what they were doing was politicizing. Granted, I mean that's what that's what politicians do. If they didn't politicize shit, they wouldn't be politicians. You know, and I, I really ain't got no love for any politicians, really. I, I like Thomas Massey. I like Rand Paul. Um, you know, I think Mitch McConnell should probably just go uh, slink off into oblivion. That'd be nice. I don't really see a lot of other ones that I have much respect for. I mean, when, when your career is taking money from lobbyists, filibustering, writing legislation that says one thing up front, but then by the time it actually goes through Congress, it's just, you know, completely, you know, adulterated version of what it was. And, and then they... You know, they point fingers at each other and grandstand and jerk us around. And we sit here and we watch this shit on Fox News and CNN and MSNBC and we listen to the fucking idiots out there. You know, we sit there and we listen to the Hannity's and the Lemons. And then we are Lemmings. It, 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 it's stupidity. There's there's a there's a motive behind all this with every single person involved, whether it be with the media or the politicians. And quite frankly, it's our fault. We're stupid. The CDC, look at what they've done with this COVID shit. They've changed their minds so many goddamn times, and now you've got the the ilk of like this this David Hogg kid. I mean, what a smarmy, I'm sorry, you know what, I'm sorry, David Hogg, I'm sorry you went through what you went through in Parkland, all right, I mean, no no kid should have to go through that, but you are a smarmy little punk to sit there and say that even though you've been vaccinated, you're going to keep wearing the mask because you don't want somebody to think you're conservative, are you I'm fucking stupid, I mean, come on, it, it, let me tell you this, if you got the jab, the triple jab, the double jab, the quadruple jab, whatever the fuck it is that you got. If you took the J&J &J pill and you got blood clots, I'm sorry for you. Um, you shouldn't really have to worry about anybody else, right? I mean, what the fuck? And the cookie gnome is up there and changing his mind. There's a lot of people, right? Like Eric I'm a, I, I, Eric July, right? Like um, you all should check him out, the young, rip, young ripper. Um he, he's a dude, um, he, he's a least ever band called uh, Backwards, and a dude knows what's up, right? I've been listening to Eric for a long time. I listen to him almost on a daily basis, and I mean, he, he's right there with, I mean, we're on the same page, right? There's a lot of people that need to be put in fucking prison. Guess what? They ain't ever going to see a day behind bars. They're going to pull this fucking shit off on the American people. And we're all going to sit there and we're going to take it. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to vote them back in next term. That's what we're going to do because we're fucking dumb. If I reach one person with this message, then I, I consider myself a success. You know what I mean? Like if one person, here's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, you got to think about this. 
you sit there and, and you fight with each other over these politicians. We fight with one another over these, 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 these fucking asshats. They're clowns. And we fight with one another over which one we voted for. And at the end of the at the end of the whole fucking thing, it, it, we voted for the same thing. It didn't matter if we were D or R or whatever. We are voting for people to ruin our lives. That's what they do. I implore anybody out there to, to call in the show, send me an email, shoot me a message, comment on the fucking video. Tell me what a politician has done for you. Tell me. What's a politician ever done for you? For you personally. I can tell you when I was like two years old, I'd go to like basketball games and I'd like sit on Al Simpson's lap and drool on his shoes. I don't remember doing it, but apparently that was the case. He gave me 20 bucks when I installed his cabinets once. I said, here you go, you bastard. Merry Christmas and gave me a RC Cola and a Moon Pie. I mean, that was probably the best thing that a politician's ever fucking done for me. RC Cola, Moon Pie, 20 bucks. Hmm. Thanks. Awesome. You know. I mean, we got to think about this, folks. I mean, we're, we're a country that's st stuck in the middle of this divide right now, and it's absolutely stupid. It is so ridiculous. And I keep saying the same thing over it. I know y'all don't want to hear it from me anymore, but I'm going to keep saying it. Because it's time that we walk away from this shit. Because if we don't, if we don't walk away from it, it's going to swallow us up, and it might have already. We're on the verge of, 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 of hyperinflation. I mean... It, it's it's i've been saying this for months and everybody looks at me like i'm a crazy man like i'm stupid like i'm you know they're like oh what are you you're just some construction guy you build shit you, you know blah, blah, blah. you know you don't know anything i mean whatever you think that about me fine you're allowed to think whatever you want about me and i really don't give a fuck i don't care what you think about me to tell you the truth i mean i'd like to be everybody's friend i mean and really i'm a i mean I'm, i'd like to think that i'm a fairly decent, considerate, compassionate person. I mean, like I've said over and over and over, anybody can come on this show and I will uh, I'll, you say whatever you want to say. You can say it here. I may come back at you. I, I may not. I may agree with you. I may not. But that's the thing. That's the thing is that like we all have that, um, you know, I, I mean, that's like a basic uh, human right is to, to have the opportunity to have discourse. You know, you, you put your thoughts out there. I put my thoughts out there. And, you know, one, a lot of times I, I'm fucked up with my thoughts, you know. I mean, it, dude, I'm not going to sit here and say that, like, I'm 100%, like, on the fucking money. I'm not. I, I'm a human being, too. You know, I screw up. I, I say stupid shit all the time. I know I probably pissed a bunch of people off with what I said the other night. But guess what? You know, I ain't taking it back. I don't like it. Come back at me. Prove me wrong. You know, you have every opportunity to do that. And if you do so, guess what? I'm big enough to say, hey, you know what? You're right. You got me. I was fucked up. Thank you for pointing that out to me. Because you know what? That makes me grow as a person. That makes me grow as a human being. Like if, if, if I'm fucked up on something, I want somebody to call my ass out. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to just sit here and just sit on some pedestal and and run my neck and, and, and just not have anybody... You know, call me out if I'm if I'm bullshit. You know, I mean, if I'm bullshit, and call me out. I don't care. I don't, I don't have any ego anymore. Yeah, I've been through enough. My whole point in all of this is I'm just trying to grow personally. I'm trying to grasp this thing. I mean, I'm 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 going through a you know a whole existential thing, trying to figure out what this is all about, why we're doing what we're doing. Why are we killing one another? Why are people dying in the streets? Why are we burning businesses and, and, and buildings down? You know, why are, um, why are unarmed, you know, black men getting, getting murdered in the streets? Why do we have the problem that we have with uh, the prison system? How come we're supposed to be this free nation and we have 
per capita more incarcerated individuals than any other quote unquote free nation in the world. We've been living a lie. We've been fed a lie. We've become complacent. We've sat back and we've allowed this to happen because we're given our shitty cheese jobs. We have a mentality of this, you know, nine to five bullshit, 40 hour a week crap. How many of you out there spend a majority of your time at work looking busy? Like, like literally spending time looking busy, right? Like if you're at work, right? Like if you're doing a job, like if I'm doing a job, right? I'm going to be working on the what I'm doing. If I decide to take a break, sit down, I'll sit down, turn the TV on, have a little, got a little snack. No, I fix myself a cocktail. Whatever, don't matter. I can do that. But how many people? You got to think about that mentality when you just go and it's like you got to be there at this time every day, and in your 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 morning your morning rut is I I'm, I got to pull up at the little espresso stand and I'm gonna get my you know double macchiato, macchiato, whatever the. The hell it is you drink. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't drink coffee anymore. When I didn't drink coffee, I just would go, hey, black coffee, cup, lid. You know, there's your money. There's your tip. I don't drink coffee. I don't know. I don't know what y'all drink out there, but I've, I've heard some goofy shit. Double mocky. I, I, I don't even know. I don't, I don't mess with it. Vodka grapefruit for me. Or water. <laughs> I mean, to be straight up, be honest about things, you know what I mean? No, that's it. I don't know. It's just, it, 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 it's some sad times. And, uh, you know, like I said, my heart goes out to, you know, anybody out there and the, you know, the, the innocent people um, in the Middle East. You know, the, 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 to anybody out there in the world that's that's, you know, that, that that is living a life that's been politicized, and whose existence doesn't mean a fucking thing because of the powers that be. That's just shit that's got to stop. It's got to stop. We're here too. We're here too fucking short. It can end any day. What are we trying to do? Amassing all this, you know, we got to mass wealth. I mean, that's your symbol of success. How much shit you have? Get the shit that means something to you. You know, I mean, I try and do that. I buy, you know, I buy, I buy tools. I mean, really, that's about tools. Boots, boots are a tool. Levi's, a tool. I can't walk around butt ass naked. No one wants to see that shit. Shit. No, you know nobody wants to see that. Ask all my fucking ex old ladies. You know, some of these are jokes, people. If you can't laugh at yourself, then you can't laugh at nothing. You know what I mean? I mean, straight up, you got to be able to have a sense of humor about yourself. But really, I mean, a lot of this shit is serious. You know, I mean, I think we have to we have to take a step back. We have to do a little self evaluation of what the fuck it is that we're doing. What are we doing here? Why why are we here? To to fight with each other? To argue? To have political arguments about this shit? It's stupid. To to argue about which jackass we voted for? I mean, you have got to look at these people that we're voting for. Why are you voting? Why? What the fuck is the point? You're voting for some fucking jackass that is so arrogant and egotistical that they think... That this is what they have to do in life. They're not doing it because they're good people. Nancy Pelosi has not been in there for these many years because she's a good fucking person. 
Joe Biden has not been there for this many years because he's a good person. He can hardly even fucking speak at this point. And like I said, I don't wish any of these people ill. I don't. But I damn sure I'm not going to vote for him. Mitch McConnell, I mean, God, Mr. Peanut, if you had a monocle and a cane and you put him on a planter's can, you've got Mitch McConnell. Chuck Schumer, oh my God. I mean, they act like they're there for you. And on a grand majority, y'all are so stupid that you fucking think that that's what they're doing. And then you want to fight with one another over it. And it's fucking stupid. It really is. It's an exercise in futility. It's dumb. It's stupid. I mean, it's just all a farce. The whole thing is. You know, and I mean, we're so jammed up on our phones. And look at me, I'm sitting here the way I can talk to people now. I mean, I used to just get on the fucking pay phone with a prepaid card and, you know, call my homeboy up once in a while, somebody I hadn't talked to in a minute, you know. Like, hey, what's up, you know? And it's like, you know, and then, you know, I'd be stoked to hear from you. You had a landline. Like, who remembers back in the day when the phone rang and you, like, you, you fucking had to answer it because there was no caller ID, right? Like, the thing rang, you had, it was like, oh. Might be that, uh, you know, might be that, you know, might be that girl I was trying to talk to. Probably not. Usually it wasn't. But it might be my homeboy that I haven't talked to in years, you know, that's um, doing whatever. And I, I have, but, you know, you can't see the color ID. I mean, th those were those were good times. And especially as a business owner, I miss that because at this point, my stupid fucking phone goes off all day and really all i want to do is take the thing and just skip it across the road because it drives me nuts and if people don't get an answer right away then they've not got their gratification they call somebody else or they leave you 18 or the, here's my favorite one they call they leave a voicemail and then they follow it up with a text message yeah i'm really going to get back to you on that one let me just Sorry, I got both hands in a tank of fucking oil or gas or whatever the fuck I'm doing. I'm really going to just, you know, hang on. Let me get to your text message about the things that are so important. Your instant gratification and what you need from me. I mean, I get so sick of that every day. It's like, what do you need? You know, I mean, really, I, I don't believe that I put out too much of... Um, I mean, I'll call a cat if, like, I like, like my boy Brooke, right? Like, he's a badass mechanic, you know. He's one of my guys. And like, I'll, I'll, I'll drop what I'm doing and go help him out, and he'll do the same for me. And I know that because that dude, like, he emailed me in prison and shit. Like, his mom fucking sent me fucking Thanksgiving and Easter cards and Christmas cards and birthday cards and shit while I was locked. So, I mean, you know, I, I got, I got love and loyalty for for him and his, for his mother. You know, shout out Sandy. Love you. Um, and broke too, you know. I mean, I got a few friends like that, you know, not too many. I'll call him if I, you know, have a, a, a mechanical question on something because I know he'll give me straight up information. You know, I mean, that's asking for something, I suppose, but it's um, mainly just a little bit of info. I, you know, and, and he's usually happy to give it. To, and, you know, the dude actually goes above me. I mean, he'll like look shit up and and shoot me links and, and call me and say, hey, I found this, I found this, you know, let me, let me try this. And it's like, right on, thanks, dog. And I try and do the same for him. You know, I try and help him out whenever I can. I mean, I, 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 whatever, I mean, there's cats like that that I know that I'll drop anything and, and go give him a hand with whatever. But then you have these people that just feel like, um, they hear that you provide some service, you know, and I mean, they just got to get on that phone and then you get a voicemail and then you get a text message and it's ding, ding, ding. You get an email and it's just like, oh my God. You know, like, is this what I'm here for? You need something from me? And then you tell them a price on it and they, they bitch and whine and moan and, you know, even though OSB plywood's costing, you know, 85 bucks a sheet and, 
I mean, fuel's gone through the roof. It's just going to keep going up. Yeah, I, you know, I know I went to the grocery store the other night. They had, I mean, at Walmart and at Albertsons, they had no chicken, right? I mean, chicken is, I mean, I don't even, I'm not even talking about getting chicken breasts. I like chicken thighs, you know what I mean? I'm a, I'm about them chicken tights, you know? I think it's got flavor. You got none of it. Ground beef is running, what, nine bucks a pound or some shit like that. I mean, really, we're, we're at the point where the dollar's going to be worth nothing. The whole thing's going to come crashing down on our heads. And who's going to be stuck holding the bag? You know it ain't going to be them cats in Washington, D.C. It ain't going to be Pelosi. It ain't going to be Schumer. It ain't going to be Biden. It ain't going to be Kamala Harris. It ain't going to be that fucking Mitch McConnell. You know, and then we got this Chinese virus. And I don't care what you say. It's a fucking Chinese virus. Straight up. We funded the motherfucker. We put the money into it. You listen to that fucking piece of shit, Fauci. And I'm sorry, he's a piece of fucking shit. I don't give a fuck what you have to fucking say. He's the highest paid fucking person in the goddamn government. And he's a piece of shit. He's a cookie gnome. He's right up there with fucking Jeff Sessions. The motherfucker lied to us from jump, right? Don't need to wear the mask. Why? Why do you say that? Because he felt like it was necessary for the uh, the people working in the hospitals that they're more important than you. Now, I'm not saying that people working in hospitals and putting themselves on the line are not important. I'm not saying that whatsoever. Like I got, I mean, seriously, I got respect for those people. I mean, the the, the people that do that. I mean, the, this has had to have been a very trying um, event, and it still continues to be so for those so you know thank you i mean honestly i'm not saying that y'all aren't important you are however i'm not saying that just because you have that job that you're more important than the lady up the street right i mean like if you need to wear a fucking mask then you have a mask we are we are a country capable of making fucking masks don't you think look what we i mean come on like we can't make masks the guy lies to everybody Says so don't wear the mask, even though he knows that you should be wearing the mask. And now you got these idiots that are they get the jab, and then they they're not gonna they don't want they're well I'm not gonna take the mask off because if I take the mask off, people are gonna think I'm a conservative. What? You fucking stupid! You got the fucking jab. You put the time in to go and get the fucking jab. I could take your mask off if you fucking believe in this shit so much. I'm, I'm going to have to travel here in June, and I, I don't have the... I'm not getting a fucking thing. I ain't getting that fucking shot. Dude, there ain't no fucking way that you're putting a goddamn mRNA shot in my fucking veins. Uh-uh. Only thing that goes in a needle in me is tattoo ink. Straight up. That's it. Period. You ain't putting no fucking unproven, you know, M mRNA bullshit fucking dna you know i mean no, uh, mm, mm, nah, i'm fine thank you come again sorry i shouldn't have said that because obviously they've canceled a poo off of uh, the simpsons so we can't even make that reference anymore it's the counterculture look at the world we're living in people they took fucking a poo off of the simpsons how many people out there live in a neighborhood that has a 7-Eleven anywhere near it? Where I lived in um, North Seattle, there was probably not a business up there except for a place called McFinster's that was an Irish pub that actually even had the lettering in English on the marquee signs. I mean, like Safeway was in Chinese. I mean... It was a very culturally diverse area. And the 7-Eleven, I'd go in there all the time. And, I mean, I was down with those dudes, them, them guys. I mean, I, we were friends and shit. And I'd go in there. I, I, I mean, I called them Apu. They called me Homer. You know, I mean, it was funny. It was hilarious. It was politically incorrect. And you SJWs probably would have got really upset about it. But you know what? I cared about those dudes, and they cared about me. Like, I'd come in at night, like, they were cool. Like, we were friends. But we would say that shit to each other because it was funny. It was funny because we realized that we had these stereotypes about one another. I knew they were hardworking dudes. They knew I was, too. It didn't matter because it was fucking funny. 
and I mean, we've lost our sense of humor as a country. We've completely gone off the rails on this shit. I mean, we've gone sideways big time. Like we just don't, I mean, we don't take ourselves seriously enough. What's so serious about all this? I mean, <laughs> and fuck, it doesn't matter. We're all gonna die. We all got a dirt nap coming. I mean, no one can deny that. And, and, and we sit here and we, we, we try, you know, we, we have these definitions of success and these, these things that we're grasping for and these things we want to do. And it's, I'll tell you what, why don't you spend some time with your fucking fam? Why don't you spend some time with the people you care about? I mean, you, you, you know, you don't gotta, you don't gotta do all this shit. I mean, I'm guilty of it. I fucking work too much. I do too much shit, but you know what I'm trying to, and I'm not justifying it. I should take some time. I should sit back once in a while. I mean, I shouldn't probably even be doing this shit. I mean, I spend a lot of time sitting here doing this, but I want to fucking speak out. I want to, I want to, I feel like I got to, I, I feel like I have a, um, a, a necessity to speak. And it's not on my behalf. I'm, I'm not speaking on on you know it's 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 not a it's not an ego thing and i've explained that before it's just a matter of i feel like i've got a voice and regardless of what anybody thinks of me whether i'm just a jackass carpenter painter fucking you know whiz bang you know tool head that beats shit together or whatever hey, so be it however i've also spent quite a bit of time um, behind the pages of books and I spent a lot of time doing research and I spent a lot of time listening to people um, which is not to prop me up or anything like that it's not even what this is about I just want to see us get better because what I, what, what, what personally what I see is a, a very sick society And I don't like it. It's painful. I want to see the best for everybody. That's my thing. I just want to see everybody be good, be whole, be, you know, okay. I mean, you know, at the, at the end of the whole thing, I just want to see people uh, respect and love one another. Help your neighbor out. Don't be scared to talk to them because he doesn't wear the right hat. You know, I mean, it's so fucking silly. We've allowed this shit to go on for so fucking long. We're not helping the people that need it. We're not getting the help that we need ourselves. We're raising kids in a sick and fucked up world. And, you know, somewhere it's either going to have to turn into we just blow the whole fucking thing up or we're going to have to make some fucking changes. And it can't be the point the finger blame game shit. It's got to stop. It's not about that. It does, I don't give a fuck. It's not about the Democrat, Republican, this, that. I'm on this side. I'm on that. You know, I mean, we're run by corporations. We're being spied on constantly. I guarantee right now through this fucking camera I'm looking at that I'm getting spied on because I'm a fucking violent felon, you know? I'm a violent felon and I'm sitting here and I'm speaking a message of fucking compassion and love and peace and harmony. That's what I am. I'm a violent felon. I can never fucking vote again. I can never own a firearm. I'm capable of violence. I am. I, I don't deny that. Don't deny it at all. I am capable of it. However, I, I've not to my knowledge ever inflicted it on an innocent party. I mean, I learned how to fight as a youngster because I was the fat kid, right? I got picked on in school. The old man brought boxing gloves home and said, you sick of getting picked on? Here's how you fucking throw a punch. 
I was sick of getting picked on. I was sick of being called names. I was sick of being the fat kid. I was sick of being like ostracized from everybody. I was sick and tired of being fucking picked on. I started socking motherfuckers, you know? I mean, and I didn't, I mean, it was not like I just made a habit of going out and doing that. I didn't bully people, but you know what? You're going to come up and you're going to call me fat ass and all this shit, you know? I mean, I, hey, I was a big kid. You know? Does that mean I, mean, does that mean I deserve that? You know? I don't think so. Turn me into something I didn't necessarily want to be. I mean, talking to my friend who you just heard play that song at the start of the episode, you know, he, he told me today, he said, man, he goes, everybody knew you were, you were badass, you were hard ass and all this shit. I was never that person, man. I didn't want to be that person. I didn't want to be known like that. I, I, I never wanted to be known that way. But because I would stand up for myself because I finally had enough of the shit, you know, I mean, that's who I got known to be. And I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I guess all men have got to have a little bit of, um, you, you got to have that duality. I'm capable of, of, I'm capable of violence, but I'm capable of, of the good things too. And on that note, I'd like to hope that we can all find that capability within ourselves. Peace out. Love you guys.